Insurgency Sandstorm is the sequel to the first Insurgency game released in 2014. It follows the same ethos of design, being a more slower paced, hardcore, tactical shooter with realistic elements. I was pretty excited for Sandstorm mainly because of the style of game it was and the route that BF5 is now taking. They seem to have some similar elements, especially gunplay that overlap. Now I managed to play this game briefly at E3, but thankfully we can now get our hands on it at home and get a real feel for it thanks to the closed beta which is now live on PC. It started on Thursday and goes up until Monday 13th of August and if you pre-ordered the game you can get access. Sadly there doesn't seem to be any other way to get your hands on it right now. So then in the beta there are four game modes, firefight, push, checkpoint and skirmish. If you've played the previous game then some of these game modes will undoubtedly stand out to you. Checkpoint is the co-op game mode that you can play against AI, kind of like Terrorist Hunt from Siege or some of the co-op missions from Armour. Firefight gives each team one objective and then a third neutral point and each team only respawns when they capture an objective and the goal is to either eliminate the entire team or secure all the objectives. Skirmish on the other hand has three objectives as well as an individual cache that each team needs to protect. If both teams lose their cash and all of their reinforcement waves then it becomes a firefight match. And lastly in push there are three objectives that must be captured and then a fourth must be destroyed by the team in sequential order. For each point captured more reinforcements and time to attack the next point are given. We also get to play the beta on three different maps, refinery, hideout and farmhouse and they've each got their own style and design. When it comes to play styles Sandstorm has plenty of classes that you can choose from. Marksman as you would expect has access to the high powered rifles with the long range optics, the sniper class. Advisor on the other hand brings some unique weapons like the MK14 and the L85. Demo is of course able to carry a wide range of explosives and then the gunner has access to machine guns. Breacher is equipped for close range room clearing so weapons like the M870 shotgun and the MP7. Rifleman on the other hand well that does exactly what it says on the tin it's the standard class that you play as and this one has an unlimited amount of players able to choose it while the other classes have various maximum amounts. Lastly the commander is the leader of the team and he can call in fire support if a nearby teammate has a radio and that radio can be carried by the observer class. So what do I think of the game then? Well let's start with the good points first because I think there are some positives here and then we will cover some issues and there are a few of them from my perspective. Firstly if you love loved the first Insurgency game I have no doubt that you will love Sandstorm mainly because they're just very similar games. You die very fast in Sandstorm, you can kill people very fast so running around without thinking much will get you killed quite often and leave you quite frustrated. It's designed to be more of a tactical game. You want to take your time, lean around corners, clear buildings, flashbang rooms and slowly push through areas with the help of your team rather than jumping and running around like it's Call of Duty. You don't have much time to react when you get shot so you've got to be careful. And I like this about this game because it's different from most approaches. It rewards caution and careful play. Although there are those moments when you get a nice flank and you can just go crazy. Feels good man. The weapons feel pretty nice too, from the G3 with a 4x scope all the way to the SVD for sniping and even an MP7 submachine gun which offers a bit faster movement. I have to admit though that I am still very partial to the AK-47, it just reminds me of the COD 4 days. Shotguns are also extremely good, I had a lot of fun flanking people and blasting them away with shotguns. And the game has a weight system that gives each individual item you select a specific value. An AK AK-47 for example will weigh more than an MP7 and then if you choose to take a sidearm you'll have less weight to perhaps put a compensator and a sight on your rifle or maybe give yourself some body armour. Everything has a weight value and it's all designed to keep an element of balance. But also play a choice and this forces you to pick your setup wisely and try to cater it to your playstyle. More weight of course and you'll move slower and it does affect your stamina amongst other things. But damn when this game works and you get a few nice kills in Sandstorm it feels very rewarding. And that's what's so good about this game because the game has a rewarding shooting system combined with a very fast time to kill and you just end up feeling really lethal when you go on those kill streaks. When it works, it works great and it forces you to play differently to how you'd normally play some other FPS games. 
And there's also surprisingly a dismemberment system in the game. You can turn it on and off and it looks very impressive, if not a bit gory when you kill an enemy player or watch your player's body fall to the ground when you get killed or blown up by an RPG. Pretty brutal at times. So when it shines, it really shines bright. Sadly, it's not all good news for this beta. Performance is a huge issue right now and I can't stress how important performance is in a FPS competitive game like this. First up, the old game used to be on the Source Engine. This game, however, has moved across to Unreal Engine, and so naturally, there has to have been a lot of work behind the scenes getting Sandstorm to where it needs to be on a new engine. I don't take that lightly, and I've got no doubt that it's an incredible amount of work, but currently, it's way off where it needs to be. And I think, yes, it's easy to just ignore the problems as well and just say, well, it's beta, don't worry about it, it's gonna get better. And while that might be true, it can of course get better, I do want to point out a couple of things. Firstly, the game is due to release in September on PC, and in 2019 on Xbox and PS4. September's next month, it's not like there's six months of dev time left to iron out the massive performance issues. It runs really bad on my system. Also, how many games have we played in recent times on the Unreal Engine that have had poor performance for whatever reason, and they never really see huge performance updates even 12 months after release? Games like Ark, Survival Evolved, and more recently PUBG, sure there have been improvements, but there are also large-scale games taking place in sprawling environments. Sandstorm is a smaller infantry game, so the performance issues are quite surprising to me. And graphically, it isn't an amazing looking game. Some of the character models are quite poor, and also the animations sometimes. It doesn't look like a new game, but it runs poorly, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I can't say what the problem is, because I don't know, I'm not a dev, I don't work on the team. Is it map optimization? Maybe. Apparently it hasn't had that yet. Is it just the general game optimization, or maybe something inherent with the Unreal Engine? I don't know, but it's definitely a concern for me going forward because when I played the game at E3 it didn't have particularly good performance back then either but I hoped that it would be better when the beta released and sadly that's not the case. At times I was dropping down to 40 and 50 FPS and the mouse in general just felt really awful and inconsistent. Sometimes enemies would fire or I would fire and I'd get a big performance hit making it difficult to control the recoil and just generally aim at people. I also noticed that when I had the scope detail to high, I would lose a significant amount of FPS every time I aimed down the sight, which as you can imagine in this game is a lot of the time. And I think this is because the game uses 3D rendered scopes. But if it's always gonna give you that much of a performance hit, is it worth having it in the game? I don't know, I hope that they can iron that out. And as I mentioned, mouse movement in general felt a little off for want of a better term. Not very sharp or precise, I never felt in control. I wonder if the mouse movement is maybe tied to the FPS, that's been the case in games in the past. Regardless of if it is or it isn't, bad FPS on Unreal Engine games always makes mouse movement feel very bad. I'm sure we can all remember the problems that we've had on PUBG. But just as we were talking about, for all of this bad performance, the visuals really haven't taken a huge leap forward. It's definitely an upgrade on the first game on Source. Yes, I think that's absolutely fair to say. But does the game look amazing? No, I don't think it does. Sometimes, yes, but also most of the time very bland. And the animations too, they feel very alpha at the moment and it's an area that I think needs improving. Players often skate along the ground and even when they're actually running they still seem very floaty. There just doesn't seem to be any weight to them. But I will say this though, that the weapons and the weapon animations do look very nice and detailed, so credit where credit is due. A couple of other things of note when it came to audio, I had a couple of bugs where the audio of my gun just dropped out. Yeah, that's probably something that they can easily fix. And I think the general audio in the game is fine and the weapon sounds are good and realistic, but I think there's way too many instances of player audio cues that are triggered. What I mean by this is that the players, for you and also the enemies and your teammates, call out everything. Throw a flashbang at an enemy and he will scream out, I am flashed, I can't see unbeknown to the player who's actually flashed. This makes it exceptionally easy to use to your advantage. It's kind of like fishing for audio cues, and it's something that used to be a real annoyance in BF4, so I'd like to see that toned back a little bit. Maybe just have them for your teammates or something, I think that would be fairer. You don't want to punish players who haven't done anything wrong. This restricted area system needs to completely go as well. The area that I'm in now looks like a completely playable area that you could use to go on a flank. But if you're in it, a message comes up on your screen and you can't fire your gun. But it looks like I'm still in the map. 
I'm not a fan of this system at all and it just causes a big disconnect and frustration to the players. It looks like I can shoot the guy but because I'm one meter over I can't. I feel like that needs to be completely changed. All in all the beta of Sandstorm when it works I think it works amazing but there's a lot of issues right now and I really hope that they can get them ironed out. It could be an incredible tactical game with a solid audience much like Rising Storm or Squad. It's a bit niche yes it caters to a certain type of player and I think that those players will still love and appreciate the game and I think games like this are becoming more and more popular as people crave a challenge in the FPS genre and as I said in the previous video I did on this I think if they nail the console release and it runs well and looks good then it it could be a really popular game on console because it doesn't really have any peers there. Maybe Siege I guess you could say but it's a different type of game to that I feel. Most importantly though the performance on PC has to be improved significantly. So many parts of the game rely on having even a moderate level of performance and without it I can find the game quite frustrating. I want to love this game, I think it's got great potential but it needs a lot of work before it's in a good state I think. So let's hope that this build is an old one and some of these issues are already fixed and when the game launches next month it will be in a much better state. I hope so. And that's all for today guys, do let me know your thoughts if you've played the game down in the comments below. I've got my fingers crossed that they can iron out the kinks in this one. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.